Welcome to this Euractive Media Partnership organized by Opera and Safer Phosphates on Healthy Soils for Sustainable Agriculture. Why a drastic reduction of cadmium and phosphates is vital uh, to have safe food. I'm Brian McGuire. Uh, you can follow the, this debate at hashtag EA Debates. Uh, please tweet your comments using the hashtag. Our social media team will respond to you there. And to ask questions, go to the chat section and use the ask button uh, there as well. We'll bring those questions to our panelists uh, through the course of the discussion. So don't leave them uh, to the very end. So clean and healthy soils are integral to achieving the objectives of the farm to fork strategy. Healthy and sustainable food systems will secure a resilient environment, zero pollution, climate neutrality, and biodiversity restoration. Soil pollution by heavy metals such as cadmium has been degrading the safety of food and water for decades, posing a threat to public health and the environment while exposing vulnerable populations to risks that could be controlled. Despite the adoption of the fertilizers regulation setting harmonized limits on cadmium uh, and phosphates, uh, Europe needs further efforts to secure healthy and fertile soils, both through the, the most recent CAP agreement, which rewards use of cleaner phosphates, and through the upcoming EU soil strategy. The publication of the white paper on cadmium and phosphates uh, by the Opera Research Center of the University Catholica de Sacre Coeur uh, takes stock of the current scientific findings, explains the opportunities for the uh, food value chain to use cleaner phosphates, and calls for immediate action uh, by EU policymakers. And to discuss this uh, with us today, uh, we have with us uh, Boma Bito, a member of the European Parliament of the Greens, uh, Ettore uh, Capri, he's the director of the Opera Research Center, uh, Floriana Shimarusti, uh, she's the Secretary General of uh, Safe Food Advocacy Europe, uh, Luca Montanarella, Action Leader at Soil after JRC, uh, Ronald Vargas, uh, and his Secretary Global Soil Partnership at the FAO, and Pascal Michaud, Secretary General of Safer Phosphates. Great to have you all with us uh, today. Uh, we have a lot to cover today, and uh, normally we just give 60 seconds uh, to, to start with, but today each of you will have uh, four minutes approximately for uh, introductory uh, remarks and a short presentation. And uh, we're going to kick off uh, this morning with uh, Ettore, and uh, the floor is yours, sir. Let's, uh, let's see what you got. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. And uh, I'm so happy to, to be here and together with all the colleagues and friends. Anyway, so you, you already introduced the, 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 the issue uh, in a very correct and transparent way. Uh, uh, I, am a, I am a soil scientist. I'm uh, uh, basically uh, working on uh, soil science and uh, risk assessment and risk, risk management uh, for, no, since, since I'm in the 90s. And because I'm soil lover, of course, I mean, uh, uh, I am uh, uh, always very, 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 very much worried about uh, the, the soil health and, uh, and uh, fertility, especially because uh, soil is uh, the most relevant uh, uh, compartment uh, uh, that produces resilience to the ecosystem. And it's, I mean, uh, uh, the open issue of, uh, of, uh, of cadmium, because cadmium uh, is really a problem uh, when we talk about uh, uh, soil fertility and soil health and, uh, and ecosystem resilience. Because it's a uh, 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 heavy metal that, that we know very, very well, uh, which accumulate in soil and uh, uh, in the living organism. Uh, next slide, please. Um, in, a, in quite permanent way, because it's a heavy metal, it's, it's, a, it's a trace element uh, that, uh, that, is, that, is, that is very persistent. Uh, of course, I mean, cadmium is uh, uh, part of the, of the natural uh, uh, pedogenesis of the, of the soil because uh, soil derived from the, from the rock uh, degradation. But anyway, so I'm, there are very important input sources. Uh, uh, this in uh, which, I mean, uh, the, the, the fertilization and especially the phosphate represent one of the main sources. Uh, in this slide, you can see that uh, uh, the cycle of uh, uh, the um, the source of uh, starting from the source of uh, of uh, fertilization by phosphate is producing I mean uh, a kind of a, a life cycle that is uh, in, in a very intensive way is uh, accumulated in soil and then is affecting the uh, the food quality. This means that if we work for an healthy soil, uh, of course uh, with uh, uh, 
very strong reduction of cadmium concentration and accumulation, you can also guarantee uh, safe food and also ecosystem resilience and, uh, and uh, protection. Um, when we talk about the relation between cadmium and human people and consumers, of course, I mean, food is the main uh, primary source of cadmium. For this reason, in, 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 I mean, uh, soil uh, contamination is very relevant because, I mean, it's, uh, it's the main host uh, of, uh, of, the, of the plant cultivation. And cadmium, next slide, please, is also very, very much carcinogenic because we know that it's carcinogenic from a long time. Next slide, please. Especially to human because uh, it is producing, I mean, uh, very, very strong uh, um, illness. So for this reason, I mean, we have to try to tackle the problem very soon concerning the reduction of cadmium input uh, by fertilizer, by phosphate. And this, I mean, require, that's, I mean, is the main output of my, of the, of the, of the white paper. First of all, the use of phosphor fertilizers with uh, uh, low content on cadmium, clear labeling, we need, of course, uh, in terms of sustainability and sustainable use of the fertilizer, subsidies incentives to, for the farmers related to the use of the low cadmium uh, fertilizer. And then we need the soil and water monitoring because we should understand, I mean, how uh, is uh, uh, the sink in terms of level of cadmium for understanding the risk and for managing the risk. Next slide, please. So um, in this way, uh, I mean, uh, and this is my, my conclusion, uh, because, I mean, the, the provisions of the new legislation, we have the opportunity not only to talk about these issues, but then to solve the problem and moving uh, the European agriculture in a more sustainable way for food quality, for ecosystem resilience. That's, I mean, the issue that is open uh, in the white paper that you mentioned before. Thank you very much, Brian. Ettore, that was uh, a perfect four minutes. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Floriana, floor is yours, four minutes. Yes, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much to invite myself and SAVE to this very interesting webinar. Uh, thank you to, to Ettore and his presentation, because I believe the work you're doing is very, very important. All the research that doing on cadmium, very useful for consumer organization, can base uh, a lot of knowledge on their paper and research. So thank you for their work. So uh, I'll be very, I try to stay in four minutes, please, Brian, if I talk too much, as all Southern Italian, we always talk too much, please tell me one minute before, after three minutes, so I'll try to be in the four minutes time. Please, next slide. So first of all, who we are, SAFE, it's a, a European consumer organization, we are based in uh, Brussels. We try to represent consumers during the EU food legislation process, so actually what we try to achieve is to protect European consumers during the EU food legislation process. And cadmium is a very important issue uh, for SAFE. So who are our members? National Consumer Organization, Vegan and Vegetarian Health Organization, Obesity Association. And our activity and mission, as I said, it's lobbying to improve the EU legislation framework. Next slide. This is just a very short are video sure to explain you who you are. Let's think about, for example, an apple. Yeah, of course. It's safe and healthy. What about pesticides? I'm sure the EU is taking care of them. How about these candies? I think they are fine. My kids love them. Do you know what they are made of? A lot of sugar, I guess. But I'm sure that all the ingredients meet the EU regulations. Can you read the label of those packaged foodstuffs? Of course, I can. Are they clear to you? Hmm, E171, E621, oh, that's a lot of E numbers. I don't know what they mean, but for sure they follow EU regulations, so they must be safe. But are you sure that EU food law gives enough consideration to our health? Safe Food Advocacy Europe, SAFE. We strive for safer and healthier food for European consumers. Are you sure that? Thank you. Now, let's go to the next slide. Yes. So the reason why I show you the, this briefly, this video is to explain you what we do and why for us and for consumers, the problem of CADVIEW can, can be an important issue. So um, how can consumers be exposed to cadmium? Why consumers uh, get cadmium in, in their body? So the food groups and mainly uh, contribute to the dietary cadmium exposure are cereals, vegetables, nuts, uh, 
potatoes and meat. So there is the theory that vegetarians have higher dairy uh, dietary exposure and vulnerable groups uh, like children, of course, and uh, people who smoke. People who smoke get more, more cadmium. So agriculture um, try to, uh, let's say, significantly contribute to diffuse soil pollution in Europe. So uh, we try uh, to, to, do, to follow study and to see research uh, how cadmium affects the health uh, of consumers. Uh, for sure, uh, industrial uh, pollution uh, in many places in the EU has deeply contributed to increase uh, cadmium on, on land. Uh, next uh, slide, please. So uh, how, what's the best place to protect soils and consumers? So the regulation introduced limit for toxins contaminants. Uh, for the first time was Article 49.B um, of the regulation 2019-1009. Review the limit value for cadmium content in phosphate uh, fertilizers. Um, it actually was agreed to uh, limit uh, for uh, um, cadmium content in phosphate fertilizer, 60 milligrams, which is what the legislation uh, has decided to, to, to apply now. But actually, we believe that the, the, the maximum level should be lower uh, than what it is now. Uh, yeah, to fight climate change, actually, soil is really crucial uh, to protect human health. So the soil degradation is a very serious and, and important issue. Next slide. Um, yes, uh, maybe let's go to next slide because I'm worried that the time is very, very short. So um, what is hampering the protection of clean soil and consumer protection? Um, yes, what we need for wider policy support for the most sustainable forms of agriculture. So farmers uh, are the life of farmer is not easy because we have a lot of legislation to try to limit um, and to control uh, the, the soil. However, there are some of them are very important. And what we believe it's important is to have from the farmer's side, which for him economically, it's really not affordable, but the kind of analysis of the possibility to analyze uh, the soil, where he's going to work, and the possibility for, at national level to control the soil where the farmers is going to work. This is actually something that nowadays doesn't really happen at, at the level we would like it will. So, um, so this is what we hope it could happen in, in the future. And the incentive to increase consumer accessibility to healthy and sustainable agricultural products. And then there is the issue of how much the product costs if consumers can handle it. And then there is a lack of a comprehensive policy framework to really protect soil and land. So the environmental, the European Environmental Agency assess as a key gap. And this is what we hope uh, will happen for, for the future, really, to have a policy framework to protect soil and land. Next slide. Uh, yes, um, actually, labeling of food products is important. Uh, let's say we always say without information, there is no choice. But um, what you have to understand on this is that if I write on a product low level of cadmium, does a consumer will understand it? Does a normal consumer, average consumer, knows what cadmium is and make sense for them to have this message like, okay, you have the label that vegetable of that nuts is a very low cadmium. Not, most of consumer wouldn't understand actually what does it mean to have a low uh, cadmium because there is not a general knowledge about what is cadmium. Do you find on vegetable cadmium? I mean, it's, it's an information that consumer do not have enough. So I think the best would be to reward best practice uh, to financial incentives and promotion uh, in the future uh, on sustainable agriculture. Next slide. Okay, one minute, Florian. Thank you.
Yeah, I finished. Here is a mistake. It's written in Calabria, but of course, it's Campania. I'm talking to the Italian <laughs> are with us today. There was just the case of La Terra dei Fuochi, which is an area near Napoli in Campania, where actually it's called the Land of Fire. And um, it is a big problem because it's poisoned by thousands of tons of toxic material and waste, uh, which are on this, on this land. And because of this, uh, there is a very high level of cadmium. It's one of the uh, one of the things which is, there are much more problem on this piece of land. But the area is one of the major cases of illegal toxic dumping, and so for us it's 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 a big issue in that area because it's it's complicated to really um, handle the situation in that part of Italy. But it's just one example. So there've been analysis on on the blood of certain people who get sick and have uh, health issue leaving that area, and they find very high level of uh, cadmium. Thank you so much. Sorry, I was trying to be really in the four minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Florian. Uh, Southern Italian, four minutes. Thank you. Okay, good. Look, uh, Montanarella, and uh, the floor is all yours, sir. Brian, thank you for introducing me. Um, uh, as you said, I work at the European Commission in a service called Joint Research Center, which is the science policy interface of the Commission. Our job is to support our colleagues on the policy making side with the necessary data and scientific evidence. Uh, EU policies are by definition based on scientific evidence and data. And so um, my job particularly is to do this for soils. So um, I will tell you a few things about what we are doing concerning collecting um, uh, facts on the ground about the situation of soils in Europe and particularly in relation, of course, to the topic of today, which is cadmium. So next slide. Um, uh, we, we do this through a, a, a pretty operational uh, activity called uh, the EU Soil Observatory, which has been launched uh, last year, building on our previous uh, 20 years of experience with the European Soil Data Center. I will not go, given the time frame, through all the details of what we're doing there and the support we provide to the many different policy areas of the European Union which are relevant to soils, but I just will focus on the issue which is uh, under discussion in this meeting. Uh, so next slide, of course, the core of the observatory is the capacity that we have at EU scale to measure and monitor regularly the status of our soils. We do this through a pretty sophisticated system, which is called LUCA Soil, Land Use, Land Cover Aerial Survey, where roughly 5,000 surveyors go on a regular basis on sites which are very well documented. Uh, roughly, we go on 25,000 sites every time. Uh, this survey is based on a regular grid, one by one, uh, two by two kilometers, sorry, which is equivalent roughly to 1 million hundred thousand points across the European Union. Uh, we have done this survey already since 2009 uh, several times. So we have data from 2009, 2015, 2018, and we are currently implementing the survey 2021-22. Which is very important to keep in mind is that we keep all those soil samples collected in those exercises, which, by the way, are pretty costly. Uh, and these are kept in the European Soil Sample Archive so that we can go back at any time and remeasure certain parameters, for example, cadmium. Uh, by the way, we have a plan within the upcoming uh, EU soil strategy to uh, further enhance this system and go up to potentially uh, 250 sites that we will measure regularly. And so this will be much more reliable and much more detailed to what we are doing now, which is already uh, concerning the EU, probably the most detailed information you can get. Next slide, please. So uh, what do we measure? Well, I will not go through all the parameters. We'll, ju we'll just focus on the issue at scale, which is uh, cadmium. So heavy metals, of course, these are point measurements. When you measure something on soils, you need to go on the ground, take a soil sample, bring it to the lab and analyze it. And of course, this is a, a, a information rel relative to one point, then you have pretty sophisticated spatial interpolation techniques that allow you to extrapolate those measurements to the surface, so making a real map of a certain parameter. So let's get to the cadmium map, which is the most updated data that are currently available. Next slide. So on this map that you see here, you see the current situation concerning distribution of cadmium in the EU uh, um, uh, soils. 
um, you will see bigger dots, which are the outliers. So these are levels which are going well above the one milligram per kilogram of soil threshold that we have chosen. So we have uh, areas, uh, sites, which are particularly high in cadmium content. And this is typically correlated with well-known uh, mining sites or well-known industrial areas. But what is more important to us is the diffuse pollution, so the diffuse distribution of cadmium levels in soils, which are actually these levels that we should look at if we want to then uh, make any consideration concerning diffuse pollution by phosphate uh, contaminants, contaminants in phosphate fertilizers related to cadmium. So next slide, uh, you will have uh, these data um, um, presented in a way of probability of exceeding the one milligram per kilogram of soil uh, cadmium concentration. As, as, as you can see, uh, certain areas of the European Union are particularly at risk of exceeding the one milligram per kilogram threshold, which is, by the way, an arbitrary threshold chosen by us, not strictly related to any toxicological uh, consideration. But this just to illustrate that uh, cadmium distribution in European soils is not uniform. You have areas with higher levels, areas with lower levels. This can be correlated to the geological background, can be correlated to human activities, and can be, of course, correlated to uh, amount of phosphate fertilizers historically used in some of those areas. Finally, uh, last slide before I close, is to uh, relate all this, of course, to the issue at stake, which is um, the uh, issue of cadmium uh, uh, traces present in the uh, phosphate rock used for mining the uh, phosphate uh, um, uh, raw material needed for preparing the phosphate fertilizers. As you know, different uh, sources have different basic levels of cadmium uh, contaminants. Uh, typically, the main suppliers uh, have uh, a medium range of cadmium contamination with some supply and some uh, areas of productions which are known to for having lower levels of natural cadmium uh, contamination into these phosphate rocks. And this, of course, is all the basis on which we can then make further considerations in this debate. And thank you for your attention. Next slide, you will have our uh, contacts if you want to know more. Thanks a lot. Luca, thank you. Thank you very much. It was uh, concise. And uh, we'll come back to some of those issues in just a moment as well. Now let's uh, go to Ronald Vargas. Ronald, how are you today? Thank you very much for the opportunity. Fine, thanks. Uh, happy to share this moment with all these great colleagues. Can I share my screen? Let's see. No, you can't, uh, I, unfortunately. It's not going to work. No, it's, it's not going to scale up. Ronald, can you continue without sharing your screen? Is that possible, please? Yes. Thank you. OK, then I will just uh, provide some insights from the work we do in relation to, to, to this topic. Well, in FAO, what we are doing is to promote sustainable soil management and the one health approach. The one health approach consists of trying to uh, advocate for uh, human health, but also animal and environment. And in there, we include soil health. Why? Because as you know, not only our food comes from soils, but many ecosystem services that are important for our population and our life are delivered by soils. If soils are healthy, then our environment will be healthy, but also our food, because the food is where uh, all the life chain starts, right? Therefore, it's fundamental that uh, we are focusing the sustainable management of soils under this one health approach. As we work with countries, Definitely, we work from normative tools till uh, trying to see the technical aspects of it. As previous speakers already highlighted, uh, we need technical and scientific evidence for making decisions, and this is crucial on soils. 
we have performed the global assessment on soil pollution. And of course, if you read the report, it's quite scary because we, there is a hidden reality that we all know. We say hidden because, yes, you cannot see. Luca clearly mentioned soils are there. We are standing on them. And many times we avoid to address this issue because we know that there could be economic implications after that. And the soil pollution report is telling us that, uh, unfortunately, there are regions that are having different issues around the world. But there is no one single region in the world that is not affected by soil pollution. There are different drivers according to the human activities, but there is a lot of legacy out of activities in a very historical areas where agriculture has been playing a role. Uh, fertilizers, of course, plus other agrochemicals that we use in agriculture, if not used properly or judiciously, they can cause some issues, not only to our environment, but also to us. And I think that's why it's important to uh, keep give attention to this point. Why? Because sometimes when it is about the environment, not everybody is uh, uh, really concerned. But when it comes to our own health, then that's the issue. We have normative tools, including the International Code of Conduct for the Sustainable Use and Management of Fertilizers. Why? Because we believe that the inputs like fertilizers need to be regulated at national level. Why? Because we need to understand the different components on, of this chain. One is, of course, the producer of the fertilizer being this synthetic or organic, but we need to ensure that the quality of this fertilizer is really appropriate because it should contribute, but it should not be a problem and cause a negative effect, nor in the environment, in the soil, nor in the human health. And we also need to enhance the capacities of those who will use this product. So we need to see the whole chain. And we realize that unfortunately around the world, this is lacking. Of course, in the European Union, the case is different, right? But still, we need to go and enter and bring together all countries, all soil laboratories in the world to agree and have threshold values, for instance, for these heavy metals, including cadmium, because it is fundamental. It is time that we really face the matter all together. And this code that I'm mentioning is addressing responsibilities for all the players and the stakeholders, including the industry, governments, the scientists, and so forth. We have a network that was exactly established called INFA for analyzing the fertilizer quality, setting standards methods for measuring, for assessing, but also trying to identify these threshold values that can be used as a reference and then contextualized at a national level. We believe that it is fundamental that we tackle this issue because when we talk about food safety, safety means that we need to be 100% sure that what we are eating is free of pathogens, but also free of contaminants. Otherwise, we are putting in risk, of course, our life and the life of other people. And that's what we are trying to do. And definitely, we want to work together with all partners on this important matter, because otherwise it will be late. Thank you very much. Ronald, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, we'll go back to these issues in just a moment also. And uh, Pascal Michel, floor is yours, four minutes. Thank you, Brian. Um, first of all, I would like uh, to thank all the uh, contributors today to the debate. Uh, I think these are very interesting presentations, and I think uh, uh, the matter of cadmium is, uh, is uh, quite important for the society. And I think education uh, uh, about the risk linked to cadmium exposure, I think it's quite relevant. Um, I would like, of course, to thank uh, Ettore uh, and Opera for the great job uh, publishing this white paper. I think that will help uh, for the further discussion in the European Parliament and other institutions. So I think uh, uh, it is it is great to have such uh, uh, academic work done by uh, by Opera. Uh, I would like also to stress um, 
that today is, a, is an important day. The European Commission has released uh, its uh, soil, soil strategy. And I think the fact that the Commission now wants to tackle very seriously the contamination of soils, I think is also very important. And it will be um, another opportunity for all of us to, uh, to discuss how to uh, uh, improve the quality of soils and therefore the quality of, of products and agriculture. Safer phosphates um, represent the producers and the traders of, uh, of uh, fertilizers with very low level of, uh, of cadmium. So our producers, traders, basically uh, use phosphates with cadmium levels which are uh, below five milligrams, so even close to zero. So I think um, we contribute very much to the quality of agriculture and to a sustainable agriculture. Among um, our members, we have uh, representatives from different parts of the world, from, from Africa, from uh, uh, the North uh, American uh, co continent, from Russia, from uh, the Middle East. So we basically cover the entire world. Huh? I think uh, CIFR phosphates contributed uh, a lot to the discussion uh, 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 when the regulation of fertilizers was uh, being addressed by the EU uh, institutions. I think that thanks to us, we've managed to have at least uh, some targets identified in the regulation. This is not, of course, exactly what we wished to see. And I think this is also what, uh, it is not what the Commission wanted to have as a final result, but uh, it's a step forward. Now, um, let me a bit uh, let me a bit be uh, provocative. I think that uh, the objective of six, 60 milligram uh, per kilo of uh, P205 uh, is is not uh, a major change in the game. Uh, this will only affect um, about four percent of the market. So I think in terms of ambition, we can go much further than that. Uh, if we do not go as below as 20 milligram per kilo of P205, we will not see a major change uh, in the contamination of soils in Europe. So I would like to call uh, the European Parliament and the Commission to not wait for the review of the regulation, but already to start thinking how we can go as low as 20 milligram in the next years. Basically, uh, what uh, I would like also to stress is that uh, there is today a sort of um, basically sponsoring of uh, producers of phosphates with high level of uh, heavy metals. When you look at the, at the duties that we are uh, suffering, for instance, from uh, the US, the Canada, Russia, Saudi Arabia, we all have duties to pay to, for our exports to the EU. These duties account for 6.5%, and uh, those which uh, export phosphates with high level of cadmium in their rock uh, basically do not pay any duties. So the situation today is a bit uh, awkward. Uh, basically, the European Union is sponsoring those uh, uh, phosphate rocks which are heavily polluted by uh, heavy metals. This is a situation that needs to be addressed so that farmers can benefit from uh, uh, products, fertilizers with low level of, of cadmium products at a, at a competitive price. And this is not the situation today. Uh, what I would also like to add um, as, a, let's say, as a step forward in terms of the uh, uh, activities done by the EU and the text of the regulation is the fact that we have now a green label in the regulation, uh, a label that is uh, heavily supported by uh, CIFR phosphates. We have contributed uh, heavily to the discussion about the green label. This label will be on all our fertilizer products. The label says that we are below 20 milligram per kilo of P205. So that means that farmers will basically be uh, in a position to identify when they buy fertilizers, whether those fertilizers are, are of a higher quality uh, a higher safety for the consumers and better for the environment. So we would like to work constructively with the farmers organization 
and ensure that they are well informed about the grid labor, that they can have access to fertilizers of a very high quality. And this should be a priority also for the member states to secure uh, such a, a information. Now, uh, what we see um, in the member states, uh, we see gradually member states implementing this regulation on fertilizers. We are already very pleased to note that Hungary, Slovakia have uh, introduced the derogation uh, with uh, uh, maximum content of 20 milligram for cadmium. This is also uh, a similar situation in Finland, in Sweden and Denmark. Um, we, we are looking very carefully at the situation in France. Uh, a decree is about to be um, discussed and published by the French minister. There were clear statements from ANSES, uh, the uh, agency in charge of the evaluation and assessment of risk that we have to go down to 20 milligrams. So I really hope um, that the minister, the French minister, will in the national French decree will go as low as 20 milligram, like it was recommended by ANSES, and uh, will be a leader in uh, this discussion about the risk posed by a, a carcinogenic substance. So let's not forget that under any other regulation, Cadmium would be uh, entirely banned and should not be at all uh, available in fertilizer products. So thank you very much, Brian. That's uh, uh, our uh, uh, statement here from Safer Phosphates. Thanks so much, Pascal. I lost the follow up on there. And uh, finally, let's go to uh, Bamo Abito. Uh, Bamo is going to have uh, translation from French to English. So uh, let's just uh, see if that's going to work for just a moment. Um, the floor is yours. Four minutes, sir. Merci à vous. Est-ce que vous m'entendez bien? J'espère. Vous m'entendez? Oui. oui. Uh, oui. Uh, uh, can the translator speak also? Just to check that the translator's microphone is on, please. No. Ben, ben, I can hear you perfectly. I can't hear the translator. Can you hear the interpreter? Yeah, I, thank you. Uh, are you the inter okay? We can hear you now. That's fine. All right, there's a strong echo, but I'll do my best. Okay, we are easy. That was a bad man. No, okay, I'll easy. Hi, good morning. First, uh, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to this exchange. Uh, many things have been said. I'm really interested. Um, to this topic because I'm uh, both a farmer, this is my profession, I'm, uh, I'm also um, I'm, uh, uh, qualified in agronomy, agronomy, so I'm a specialist, and also I'm a member of the European Parliament for the Green, and so I have uh, different hats, uh, so therefore this subject is really uh, goes to my heart. So we have uh, um, touched upon different subjects, health, uh, of course, this is uh, worrying for hands. We talked about cancerogenous, uh, mutagens, this, this is a heavy metal, it has a cumulative impact. So I won't repeat what has been said on all the damages and, and uh, impact, but there are more um, impacts. And I believe that the um, uh, presentation from Etoric Capri was really interesting because you explained the, the molecule of uh, uh, cadmium through the health of our soils and this is absolutely key uh, and I'd like to add another uh, factor it is the uh, the sea the um, marine ecosystem and the water ecosystem because water receiving those heavy um, waters with uh, cadmium uh, rates, it all goes to the water flows and we find these molecules extremely polluting, extremely um, very heavy contaminant. So there is an impact on uh, water pollution to our health. But if you go beyond cadmium, 
is found in the marine environments with uh, phenomena that we can observe that are clear. So I would like to broaden up uh, our observation beyond soil, but also that we go to see what happens in our water ecosystems and marine ecosystems. So yes, we have just uh, done an overview of pollution induced by heavy metals, uh, fertilizer and cadmium. And I would like to underline, because it hasn't been said, so we are asking ourselves to how can we improve fertilizers with a lower levels of cadmium? Yes, but uh, itself, phosphate itself, it's, is already um, contentious. This is why, and maybe because I'm a farmer myself, I would like to check that if we can perhaps find alternatives to uh, those phosphates that are brought from mines, are brought, brought from other places. Uh, we know there are uh, resources that are not renewable. Maybe we can find alternatives which will solve the problem of pollution and also by heavy metals and by cadmium. And as a farmer, I was digging into the, the problem. I looked at how could I produce. Or, uh, but then you find out that cadmium and phosphate is everywhere. So it's really hard to, um, to go to do without it at the moment. There are a mineral phosphate already uh, present. So I uh, fully align with Ettore Capri uh, in the aim to protect the health of our source so that they are healthy enough with minerals that will fulfill the needs of uh, agriculture uh, naturally. So I would like uh, to go and see the roots, then the consequences. So if we can improve the roots, that's good. Because the solution to lower the rates of cadmium in fertilizer, and then we tackle consequences, but we are not looking at the cause, the root cause. And it goes with uh, other consequences. Uh, my preference will be to find other solutions, other solutions to um, to boost uh, growth of our plants. But that would be another way to go. Thank you for your uh, for listening. Thank you. Merci, Benoit. Okay, uh, let's uh, dive into all this a little bit uh, more. Just Pascal, I want to come back to you first on on the, the new soil strategy. Sixty milligrams not going to make a huge uh, difference for uh, for most of the sectors only affects four percent of the market why is this lack of ambition there do you think pascal to unmute sorry a classical mistake um yeah the the, <laughs> the, the, the lack of <laughs> the lack of ambition uh, is probably driven by a political consideration. I think uh, the, um, the the member states did not manage to to come to an agreement that uh, we have to uh, uh, work towards a different type of policy for agriculture, and we have to depend less from uh, uh, some particular sources of phosphate fertilizers. We in Europe uh, import essentially phosphate rocks from uh, Northern Africa, and uh, it became a, a very sensitive topic when it was about to uh, diversify the sources of phosphates imports into, into Europe. So uh, instead of focusing on environmental and health concerns like it is being done, for instance, for other uh, inputs in agriculture, um, the uh, discussion became a very, um, very geopolitical discussion instead of being a rational, scientific and, and technical discussion. And that's basically the main reason why the objectives that were set initially by the Commission were not met. And today um, we have the 60 milligram, we will have to wait 
uh, years before we can go to 40 milligram and, and 20 milligram is almost a dream. So I think some states now uh, realize that uh, the decision that was made at the time of the regulation uh, review, the decisions were not strong enough. And that's why we have seen member states introducing derogations. And that's why we hear that France is considering going to 20 milligram. Um, they are now under heavy pressure from ANSES, uh, given the fact that it was clearly established that the vulnerable population, so uh, uh, children, uh, women, are exposed to level, uh, levels of cadmium, which are um, uh, problematic. So um, I think slowly but uh, surely we are moving now towards um, uh, a better uh, outcome and i think the society is now much much more informed on the risk posed by by uh, uh, cadmium and phosphates and uh, that's why i i tend to to be uh, let's say positive uh, and uh, let's see what happens with france if france decides to go uh, uh, that low with the cadmium content i'm convinced that germany will follow with the new government and that uh, in the next years, we will really see uh, uh, a game uh, a game changer situation. So, yes, let's see what uh, what's going to happen. In, in, in a nutshell, basically, the policy process said, "Look, we, we know this is a carcinogenic. It's affecting women. It's affecting children. But we're not going to do too much about it right now because it would offend our trading partners." Is that right? Yes, that's what you can conclude. Yes, yes. Not a great conclusion, is it? Hey, Tori, uh, let's, uh, let's go to your uh, white book on cadmium as well. Uh, three key policy recommendations uh, from Opera. What are you setting out that needs to be done now? Uh, to be honest, Brian, I think that uh, uh, this is our position. Uh, everything is uh, urgent. I mean, uh, most of the, of the issues that uh, have been covered uh, um, during this uh, this talk, uh, during this discussion, they are included in the, in the white paper. What we highlight uh, uh, is, uh, first of all, I mean, is uh, what Pascal was saying before. I mean, we need an harmonization because if we don't have uh, an harmonization for the thresholds uh, at European level, uh, really nothing will change. I mean, I, I want to, to, to do the example of the um, plant protection product. I mean, uh, we work strongly in the last uh, 10 years and for uh, harmonizing uh, the, the threshold value. And then was the challenge, because then the, today the risk assessment and the risk management for the pesticide is at the highest, at the highest level. And uh, we, are, we, are, we are moving uh, the farmers in a very sustainable way with the directive on sustainable use of plant protection product. Everything was starting from the harmonization of the threshold value. So this is the first, of course, uh, point that we highlight, which is quite not broad, a large in terms of, uh, as Pascal said, the geopolitics uh, issues. Then we need, of course, uh, to stimulate the farmers. So we need really, uh, we, have, we have to find a way, first of all, I mean, uh, to, to involve, engage the farmers in the best use of the, of the phosphate. And this, this, uh, we can do this again with the experience that, that we got in the, in the last years. Uh, if we create uh, if the right uh, cultural innovation and the right technological innovation. And uh, I mean, it's paradoxous. If we have a phosphate with lower cadmium, uh, and we know that cadmium is, uh, is a problem. So, of course, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, cultural innovation, the farmers have to use it. I mean, uh, because this is a good measure for sustainability, for something which is absolutely clear, because we know about the cadmium from the beginning, when we started with the agriculture story. And then uh, we need, of course, uh, basically, in, uh, as consequence of the cultural innovation of the farmers, uh, of the stakeholders that surround the farms, of course, we have... Uh, technological innovation, because with the sustainable use of the phosphate, 
for instance, with the lower cadmium, then we think about all the stories that are in the life cycle of the phosphate and the, and the around the lands, the life cycle of the food production and agriculture, so the agro-food system. And the third point that we highlight in the white paper is concerning create the right environment. Because we cannot do, we cannot reach the objective and the goals of the Green Day, Fun to Four, New Generation, and so on, if we don't create the right environment. That means, first of all, correct, transparent, and consistent conceptual and consistent uh, um, argumentation. So, because today, with the story of the phosphate and cadmium, I think uh, we are running a game of paradoxes that uh, uh, is, is making also, in terms of, uh, no, of uh, dialogue with the consumers, uh, something which is, I mean, uh, absolutely uh, inconsistent and accurate in terms of, uh, of education and in terms of communication. So I think that these three points, uh, to set the harmonized uh, European um, threshold value, uh, stimulate the farmers and then, of course, create uh, the right environment for uh, this uh, cultural and, uh, and uh, technological innovation for uh, reaching the objective of the, of the Green Deal on the farm to fork. We have the emblem, is it emblematic, emblematic the situation of phosphate and cadmium and uh, we need, I mean, uh, to work with uh, phosphate with the lower cadmium concentration. Okay, thank you very much. Let me go to, thank you, Benoit. Benoit, the, the idea that, uh, you, first of all, cadmium kills, uh, I think that's, that's fairly well established and that we we're not moving fast enough to remove this from from our food system is this a matter of as as Ettore says is it a matter of culture and innovation but that's clearly going to take a lot of time um or is this a financial as uh, incentive problem that to change uh, the market dynamics here we need more money to uh, help farmers make a transition to uh, a safer uh, type of fertilizer Benoit. Can we hear the translator? It's a cultural dimension. Sorry, I can't hear Benoit anymore. Okay. Benoit, can you put the microphone on? Okay. Can to, let's uh, yeah, if I someone think. can reestablish contact with Benoit, then we'll come back to him in just a second. Um, and the technical team can check that, and I'll come back to Benoit immediately in just just a moment. Floriana. You know, food labeling is, is, is part of this. And, um, it's all about Morocco. I'm sorry, now I can hear him. Okay. Je suis désolé, mais je suis désolé si vous pouviez recommencer parce que je vous ai pas entendu. Okay. Merci. So I was saying that uh, as a point in fact, uh, it is a very complex geopolitical context because of our relationship with Morocco. Uh, this is the Fossat mines in the Sahara, but this is uh, this is just fact. This is reality. Uh, the European Court of Justice is denouncing the bilateral agreements between the Kingdom of Morocco and the European Union, and this is something we cannot forget. Uh, I agree uh, that, uh, of course, it did. Uh, it did affect, uh, has a, have a negative impact on um, the um, regulation in Europe uh, to reduce the level of cadmium in our soils as well as in our uh, waters. Uh, we agree, but this is nevertheless uh, the relationship with Morocco is, is a fact. And back to Brian on public policies, uh, it's true that public policies may be uh, an incentive to uh, support the uh, farmers in a different in a different logic of development. But what is disturb what I find disturbing is that uh, I feel that using phosphate is uh, uh, presented as if there was no other uh, way uh, in agriculture. So of course today our agriculture is uh, more based on productivity uh, for export with um, with um, input. Uh, of um, 
fertilizers, but we also support agriculture with a lot of public money. We talked about the role of Europe and uh, about um, society. Society is expecting uh, sounder, uh, better uh, quality, uh, but also uh, in terms of food, but also a protected environment, uh, climate, and um, the agriculture, which is using so much fertilizer is not exactly what we need for that. And when we use you use so much uh, so much public money, especially with the uh, CAP, which represents uh, more than one third of the total budget of the European Union, then we need to make sure that uh, public support uh, no longer support this because it is also, um, this is also a problem for the farmer because when the farmer buys a phosphate coming from North Africa, as Mr. Michel said, this logic is that the farmer is not autonomous. We're about when we try to um, find new logics, then we come up with um, answers which uh, free us from this dependence. Uh, because also the uh, the resources in uh, fertilizers are uh, finite resources. And uh, in terms of public policies, I think public support through uh, the CAP is, should be more focused on other types of logics to reduce the use of phosphates and cadmium with uh, agronomic uh, logics where the uh, farmers find different answers, find uh, uh, organic phosphates, uh, mineral phosphates, uh, with uh, agroforestry, for example, to mobilize phosphates without uh, using external phosphates like... Uh, so, and this is also uh, mentioned in the White Book, and I uh, fully agree with Mr. Capri, and uh, I agree with his concern in terms of uh, uh, soil quality, but... Uh, the uh, farmers must become more autonomous. And I think this is what might uh, make a difference in our discussion. Thank you. Floriana, the, you, we're hearing about the economics of this, uh, the, the need for uh, innovation and to bring better solutions to, to the market, which are more accessible for farmers. But part of this market dynamic has also got to be consumer choice as well. You know, the idea of green labeling, that uh, we, we won't buy products that have higher levels of potential exposure to cadmium, to phosphates in general. Do you think this is the kind of shift that we need to uh, decouple, uh, for example, the relationship with Morocco and these other dynamics which make it so hard to make this transition? Floriana? Well, I think for actually, the first thing is to inform consumers. If consumers do not know and do not understand how cadmium can influence their food, how bad could be for them, we shouldn't forget that the International Agency for Research on Cancer classified cadmium group one as cancerogenic to humans, but it's an information that um, not consumers do not know. So, however, as we always said, healthy food in a healthy environment. So if we could guarantee to a consumer somehow with, with a green label or in some way that that food gets from a healthy environment, so cadmium with slow, among many other things, it's not just cadmium problem, but there are many other uh, problems um, for the from the environmental point of view. And then consumer can get immediately this information to be interesting but we have seen a lot with the Nutri-Score and all our position on this, how uh, to have the best label, which works for everybody, which is not misleading for consumers, uh, is very, very difficult. So uh, it's a lot of work around it, but to inform consumers, this is fundamental. But first, to inform them that cadmium exists, what's the issue, etc. And then by getting that kind of information to inform them how much healthy food must come from a healthy environment and to give a way to talk to them directly in an easy way, direct way, but in a way that doesn't mislead uh, them, as sometimes can happen with, uh, with food labeling. Thank you. I just want to go to, to look and to Ronald for a moment. Then we're going to take some of the questions which you already have uh, there. So I just encourage our audience to send in uh, more questions and we'll do a batch of those in just a moment or two. Look, uh, you know, where in Europe is worst affected uh, by, by cadmium? And you know, it, 
do you, do you see different dynamics at play here as to why they're they're more heavily affected? Yeah. Um, what really um, we should keep in mind, especially when a debate becomes so polarized, like in this case, is to please um, stick to the data and to solid scientific evidence. And this is what we're trying to do as commission, uh, also within the strategy that we have just presented today. You know, the college has today adopted the new uh, soil strategy for the EU. And, and one of the key elements of that strategy is um, uh, our new mission, uh, a, soil deal for, a soil deal for Europe within the mission. Uh, we will have uh, quite substantial uh, research being uh, financed in order to address new technologies and new approaches to many of the contamination issues in the EU. Uh, let me just mention that, of course, phosphates are an issue, but you can also look a little bit into uh, alternative solutions like circular economy solutions, our recycling carbon that goes to the cities back to the land. And also, let's bring back science when we take decisions also at national level. I was really impressed by the fact that some countries have asked derogations uh, which are not coinciding with the countries and the areas that I've been showing in the map I showed during my presentation, where using an arbitrary one milligram per kilogram of soil of cadmium, um, uh, we have singled out areas which are reddish, if I can say so, on the map, so areas which have a higher probability that you may exceed certain levels of cadmium in the soil. So um, decisions taken not on the basis of the data, not on the basis of the evidence, in my view, um, then only create additional uh, additional confusion and additional problems. So um, strong science, strong data, these are what we are looking for. Now, why do we have certain areas with higher cadmium level? I already said. Uh, there are historical reasons in the European Union due to a very old industrialization history. Um, and so we have very known, well, well known uh, areas, hotspots due to mining and industrial activities. We have natural geological background in some areas of Europe, especially in North and Eastern Europe, where um, the, the geological background is simply uh, bringing uh, a higher cadmium level. And then we have areas that indeed show a strong correlation with higher cadmium levels and well-known very high application rates of phosphates. So there is, of course, in some areas, a correlation possible with historical phosphate applications. So uh, a, a complex issue that needs to be looked in, uh, from, a, from, a, from, a, from a very uh, objective and scientific point of view in order to avoid then um, a debate which very easily can go out of hand because of course it's a highly polarized debate like many other debates. And then maybe at a certain moment, the facts and the science just falls under the table and it's not any more relevant for any of the decisions taken. Thank you, Luca. From what you're saying, though, it's it's clear that it's not just the case that we have a heat map of where the worst affected areas are, but we also have a clear understanding of the dynamics involved there. That should help target policy uh, and in terms of incentives to uh, alleviate uh, certain types of activity, whereas other natural structures, ge geographical, geological structures, are not going to be so easy to remedy. So, you know, it would seem that the the, the application of any uh, soil strategy has the potential to change some areas yeah. more quickly than others. Yes. Let, let me just add that you must not forget the local dimension. The, uh, you cannot have one approach everywhere. Soils are highly diverse across Europe. Uh, situations locally are very diverse and you need to take into account this diversity if you want to really address this issue in a, in a consistent way. So uh, that's very crucial. Thank you. So no one size fits all policy for this. Uh, okay, yeah, Ronald, exactly. just before we take some some questions, thank you. Before we take some questions as well, you know, you've, you've heard the European perspective here, the FAO uh, taking its approach. What do you think the FAO can contribute uh, to Europe's understanding um, of, of what can be done in the, the short to medium term to reduce cadmium in, in our soil and increase the, the health of our food? Thank you very much. And well, in this topic particularly, I think we are the ones who are trying to learn more from the European Union experience because uh, this particular topic is somehow not addressed globally. 
if we go to the developing uh, world, uh, we are still facing issues on how better use fertilizers in general, and we are starting with some like how to better use uh, nitrogen so that we address the issue of climate change, the, uh, the eutrophication of water bodies. So we are still at that level. Therefore, for us, uh, this issue in the EU serves as a as an example that we need to follow and we are really committed in trying to bring it into the different regions and we are doing so by uh, having this international code of conduct because that is our uh, policy instrument but also we are learning that of course you need evidence and we totally agree with the european union and we collaborate and work on that because you need to have data in order to guide these uh, decisions but we wish we all the regions in the world will have the systems like lucas where you are monitoring soil health unfortunately this is not the case in other regions and why we need to bring the global perspective because as you know not we need to understand the dynamics in terms of also imports of food coming to the EU, but also the impacts of degradation and et cetera, and climate change, because all are interconnected. So we cannot really escape from that. But what e the EU can learn from these processes is, of course, that uh, first, they serve as an example for the other regions, so that's, I think, a, a good responsibility for them. But also that uh, in the other side is that we need to ensure that the harmonization processes are everywhere, because we cannot isolate from the, from the other parts of the world, okay? Why? Because we are trying to address global issues with local solutions. But in any case, they need to be really integrated. Now, it was clearly pointed out, we need to see two different solutions and we need to really advocate and raise awareness and two very important facts. One, why we use phosphates in this case or fertilizers in general? Because we want to produce crops, but we try to tend to increase higher productivity and we believe that adding more and more will will do so and that's not the case and we need to make an analogy with uh with humans right we cannot just you uh, overuse food because we will have problems or medicines therefore it is very important to advocate that at the same time the sustainability issues should be always part of the production cycle otherwise we will be really facing issues and we need to advocate that at political level but also at a general public level therefore we are also working in a global soil health uh, deal we are mimicking we are mirroring what the eu is doing because we believe they gave great steps towards this but definitely we need we need to start from advocacy data and we should find multiple solutions that are there even in nature so we really need to open our eyes and be serious on this because we are really uh, talking about our future here thank you thank you ronald uh, Bemo, just quick comment on the the global uh, food supply chain here as well does it concern you Bemo, that uh, you know, Europe will make uh, significant efforts to remove cadmium, but we just import uh, food sources which, uh, from places which haven't done the same. Uh, and there's a market uh, disadvantage for uh, European uh, farmers in this. Or do we have sufficient controls uh, available for us to prevent that happening? Um, Floriana is shaking her head. Benoit, I come Floriana second then. Yes, sir. Alors, Benoît, un instant. Um, yes, it's interesting debate. We, we have started this debate when uh, reforming the um, common agricultural policy 
it, these are uh, mirror measures. So the European Union will be ready to have the same requirement for product that I um, imported uh, from outside the EU into the EU to mirror those measures for products that we are exporting. So it, this is uh, uh, very pertinent. It's, it's um, uh, a current uh, discussions. I know that France, when he it will chair um, the European um, it will make this topic a priority, these mirror measures, to ensure that what we are required to do, we uh, require uh, the same for projects that we also uh, export. So that's a positive um, thought regarding your question, Brian. Merci, Bermoy. Uh, Floriana, did you have anything to, to add to that before we take some questions here? No, well, uh, just... Um that there are a lot of products coming from outside the EU um, that we believe could follow. There is some agreement that they're supposed to follow the same level of security and food safety that we have. This is a generic uh, situation. And I don't believe it's like this because you have to trust. The, this is a generic, not just in this case, but all type of food products that are, you need to trust uh, the the that country and the way they control the food, etc., which is not the, the same level than a EU level. So that's um that's I think it's an issue, can be a problem. Thank you. Uh Ettore, a question for you. And this comes from uh Tuzi Conf uh, Conf Agricultura. Um are there plants that can be used to reduce the level of cadmium in the soil? which we could use before planting a crop that is potentially more sensitive to cadmium accumulation. Ettore, do you have an answer for that? Uh, uh, I'm not sure that I, uh, that I, uh, that I catch the, 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 the completely the question, but anyways, I mean, uh, I think that as, as, as already Dr. Montanarella Luca um, anticipated, of course, uh, uh, we have a, uh, um, Actually, uh, all the technologies concerning uh, uh, the precision, uh, uh, the, the agriculture, uh, precision of agriculture that can, uh, that can uh, with, in the new technologies that, that can uh, reduce, of, of course, the accumulation. Uh, but anyway, the problem is that uh, any technology that we have, if we don't close the circular economy, the life cycle, in the in the, of, of starting from the sources of the cadmium then i mean um, easily we can fail so we mentioned the the local versus global situation that's right i mean because something that could be very very well uh, used uh, more ef ef efficient uh, uh, in in one unit of soil of one hectare uh, maybe is not uh, at landscape level so the, the agricultural ecosystem is very, very complex, as, as Ronald also mentioned. And I think that's, that's for this reason, uh, I mean, we need a very, very strong social responsibility of the different stakeholders in choosing the correct technologies. I am always very, very much pragmatic. Of course, uh, I, I am always consistent with science, also this paper. Uh, this white paper has been based on uh, around 100 uh, uh, different scientific papers uh, published and also updated in, in the last months. Uh, what want, I want to say that that's a matter of social responsibility also starting from the farmers and the decision makers that we, we need to, to have measures, not only, okay, the intrinsic vulnerability of the ecosystem is relevant, but the measures that we use for this uh, precision agriculture, for this uh, technology, they should be you know, very well based at local level and verified. And for this reason, I mean, we, we work on, on phosphate with, with, with low cadmium concentration because that's a clear evidence of something which is a, a measure, which is uh, effective because, I mean, in very pragmatic way, is uh, reducing one clear problem, which is the source of one of the sources in the main source of cadmium uh, into the soil and to the agroecosystem. So I think that okay. I, I, I'm sure that, I'm not sure if I, I have replied correctly to the question, but anyway, so just to say that uncertainty, that today we don't have 
technologies that can solve 100% the, the, the problem, but we need the portfolio. And of course, uh, first of all, in terms uh, of technologies and social responsibility, we have to prior make priority. And when some measure is clear, less uh, impacting, uh, that that's, uh, should be at the top of the list. That's okay. one case when we Thank talk you. about cadmium data at the top of the list because it's clear that it's reducing the source. Okay, thank you. Pascal, just to, to ask you, uh, in terms of clean uh, phosphates, is there sufficient supply? Is there is there sufficient uh, opportunity in the market for farmers to switch at the moment? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Brian. I also wanted to add something uh, to, to what I told. I said, uh, so um, yeah, basically, uh, there is a solution to remove the cadmium from the phosphate rock. Uh, the decadmiation process exists, does exist. It's already used in Tunisia, as far as I know. So uh, it can be done. Uh, the, the, the only difficulty is the cost for, for, for the uh, industry. The cost, however, the cost is very low. In fact, it's about $10, $12 per ton. So when you know that uh, one ton could be sold at uh, more than $100, uh, and the cost to produce is around 30, 30, 40 dollars. You can see that the uh, the cost to decalmiate is actually rather low compared to the net benefit when uh, when it is the, the, the product is sold. So um, that technology exists. It's a cost which is not so high. It's well known in the industry. So uh, that's the solution to uh, avoid soil contamination and to uh, provide good quality fertilizers. Now, um, I want to say, yes, we need fertilizers to produce. We need crop protection products to produce. There is more and more people on earth. We have to feed people. So you need, you need crop protection, you need fertilizers. Do we have enough um, clean uh, phosphates uh, in the world? to meet the demand? The answer is yes. There is uh, uh, well enough uh, sources of phosphate rock with low cadmium content. Uh, all our producers are out there to prove it. Uh, it's a matter of, of choice whether we want to uh, subsidize some uh, region of the, of the world to um, produce and sell uh, uh, um, phosphate rocks with high level of cadmium or not. But yes, uh, if uh, the EU wants to, uh, to have uh, phosphate rock with uh, minimum level of cadmium, there are sources. There are sources, for instance, in Finland. There are sources in all the regions of the world, basically from Canada, US, to um, South Africa, Jordania, Syria, Russia, Kazakhstan. All these uh, countries have uh, good quality phosphates. And they can provide the, 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 the product to the EU and to, to farmers. And as I said, in addition, those who have uh, um, unfortunately a high level content of heavy metal can invest in decadmiation. The cost is not so substantial that it cannot be done as from tomorrow. Thank you. If there's a trade policy with a subsidy uh, attached to it, I'm sure uh, Morocco and Tunisia wouldn't object to, to that part uh, too much. Is there another couple of quick questions here? Uh, Luca, you mentioned that the value of one milligram of cadmium per kilogram soil was arbitrarily chosen to create the map. What percentage of EU soils has a critical uh, cadmium concentration? Maybe you mentioned this, I don't remember. Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, we have not made still the full evaluation of the data that I presented. Actually, we are finalizing now the final publication of these results. Um, uh, as you could see from the map, uh, it's depending very much the threshold that you choose. We have chosen one milligram per kilogram just uh, out of um, the, the data that we have could find in literature. But of course, this is far below many of the toxicological studies that have been published. So um, the, I think what you need to do is a full assessment of this on the basis of this new data that I was just presenting once we have, will have finalized the peer review process. Uh, with uh, uh, the toxicological studies and all the evidence about the actual levels 
of the transfer of those cadmium in soils then into actually the food chain. So it's it's it, you need to to have a look to the complete uh, chain from from the soil till the final food. Uh, that ends up on our tables. Uh, but definitely uh, there are large areas that you can see from the map, especially in, in, in Ireland, in, in Eastern, Northeastern Europe, uh, which have uh, extensive uh, values above uh, one milligram per kilogram. So uh, the percentage still is not precisely available. I would estimate around 20%, but probably uh, we need to come back to that when we have finalized the complete evaluation of the results. Okay, Luca, thank you. That's a very clear answer. And just some quick comments from our audience, and then we're going to go to our concluding remarks with 30 seconds each uh, for sign bite from our speakers. Uh, Dijon, uh, the questions you asked, three different questions relating to uh, fertilizer and uh, different uh, cadmium removal technologies. I think Pascal uh, touched on the majority of what you've asked there. And uh, Bertrand Vallée, uh, we can also recover phosphate from secondary sources like food waste, manure and sewage sludge with very low uh, cadmium levels. Fertilizer producers should explore uh, these uh, sources. Is it possible to get the presentations after this? I guess so. If you put your email in there, Therese, um, we'll find a way to get those to you. And uh, other, uh, Gun uh, Rudquist uh, said, nobody talks about the improved recirculation of manure will reduce uh, dependence on min mineral fertilizers and problems with cadmium. Read more in policy brief from the Stockholm University. You can find that link uh, in Slido there, if you want it, and uh, maybe the team can add that on somewhere else as well today. Okay, we're pretty close on time. We have six speakers, and uh, we have a few Italians who uh, 30 seconds may be a challenge for. Uh, so let's let's uh, wrap up with our concluding remarks. And so basically 30 seconds each, uh, the, the most important uh, issues going forward uh, for Europe and, and removing cadmium uh, from our, our soil and from our food supply. Uh, let's uh, let's start with Benoit. Benoit, thank you. Translator. Sorry, Benoit. I can't. I can't hear the translator. And healthy. Um... And as a Euro uh, Parliament member, what I defended is that we need to use the scientific evidence, the scientific background, especially when science can show us uh, an alternative uh, to the dependence on fertilizers and uh, regarding protecting the soils uh, is uh, what we do with what we did with air, with water. Uh, to do the same thing with soils and to uh, protect them so that they keep the soil keeps uh, feeding us uh, for the and feeding the next generation. Thank you, Bema. Uh, merci pour votre contribution aujourd'hui. And uh, Floriana, uh, let's uh, let's go to you. Thirty seconds, please. Yes. Well, cadmium, as we talk uh, today, is a heavy metal, so it is toxic. For the body, uh, it affects uh, liver, kidney, and bones. Uh, we, as I said before, the International Agency for Research on Cancer classify cadmium in group one cancerogenic to humans. However, I agree with one of the speakers, I think it was Pascal, we talk about lack of ambitious of ambition at due level. I think we could have done a bit more on the maximum level, instead of having 60, we could have it a bit less. And the soil need to be uh, healthy in the future, and we need to have really a soil. Uh, we really need to take care of the soil. I think there are a lot of ambitions for the future about the farm to four, and all the things that are going to happen in the, in the future. We need really to work and to take care of all the issues related to soil, related to uh, the health of consumers, and really getting higher ambitious at your level uh, on this. Thank you. Florian, thank you so much. Luca, over to you. 
I will be very brief. Uh, please stick to the facts, stick to the data, and particularly stick to peer-reviewed scientific publications. And also take opportunity of the new uh, big programs that we as Commission are launching, particularly the mission on soil health. There will be plenty of opportunities to explore further opportunities for innovation in the area of uh, fertilization. As I was said, there are many new avenues that we can explore in order to reduce the amount of phosphates that we use on our soils and use alternative uh, sources coming particularly from a circular economy approach from recycling uh, organic waste coming from uh, urban areas and many other pathways that we can explore so i would strongly advocate for investing in innovation and in science Thank you, Lucas. Stick to the data. That's the T-shirt uh, slogan for our times. And uh, Ronald, over to you. Thank you again to, to, for the opportunity. Um, well, uh, I will say that healthy soils are really uh, the source for our lives. And therefore, we need to really make all our efforts to keep our soils healthy and clean. Why? Because that's the origin of our food. And for this, we really need to work at all levels. Policy, we really need our decision makers to make decisions according to good data and evidence. And we really need to take at the center the One Health approach. Second one, we really need to see how we can use all resources possible and not focus just on one source. Soil biodiversity, for, in, for instance, is one of the nature-based solutions because there are some natural organisms that can help us in this process of having more available phosphorus, but also as an alternative. Finally, we really need to advocate and raise awareness at general public so that they know what they are eating and where the food is coming from. That is fundamental. It is not just a matter of decision makers and scientists and farmers. And farmers, of course, are at the center because they are the ones who can make a difference. Therefore, let's take all ourselves, our responsibility from the industry to the consumer because all have a role to play. Thank you. Ronald, thank you so much. Pascal, 30 seconds. Yeah, I'll try to be to be uh, to be uh, clear. Um, I have four points to conclude. Um, first, um, I would like to see uh, a major political move from France as the largest agricultural market, and we want to see from France uh, the example and going down to twenty milligram in the national decree. That would definitely force the uh, entire EU to move faster with lower cadmium levels in phosphate rocks. Second, um, basically, uh, we should stop subsidizing uh, the, the producers with heavy metals uh, in phosphate rock. Let's remove the duties on those which export uh, safer phosphates, uh, higher quality phosphates. Three, um, we would like to see the green label being um, uh, well explained in all member states by authorities so that farmers are well briefed that there are better solutions available. And four, uh, we have the CAP, uh, the, the Common Agricultural Policy, which foresees, foresees the possibility to provide incentives, financial incentives to farmers to use uh, better phosphate products with no cadmium or very low level of cadmium. Excellent, Pascal, thank you so much. And last word, uh, Ettore. Thank you, thank you very much, Brian. Uh, thanks for, no, I mean, uh, this, this uh, uh, responsibility. Uh, basically, also based on the, on the discussion that we, that we got uh, this afternoon, uh, I want to leave my opinion, uh, first of all, as a citizen, and, uh, and then, of course, uh, uh, as, as professor, I mean, as academic, uh, because, of course, uh, I am, first of all, I am a citizen of this Europe. And what I'm looking for is to, uh, to have a, a, a European agriculture 
that will be sustainable in consistent way, in transparent way, in also tracing way as soon as possible. And then I think that from a political point of view, at least in theory, this is uh, clear. But in practice, uh, uh, it, this is, of course, more and more difficult. That this will require time because we need a challenge. And uh, of course, I mean, this uh, sustainable agriculture will be based on a very strong uh, cross fertilization in between the, the really the cultural and the technological innovation that of course uh, i mean uh, will be fertilized but but this i mean uh, completely challenge which is a, a cultural challenge plus a technological opportunity and then of course uh, if we have a clear technology if we have a clear measures that like uh, the phosphate with the lower cadmium, that are simple. Clear, they will reduce the source. Why not to use it? Because, I mean, these are technologies that clearly, in transparent way, in simple way, and understandable way, they really reduce the risk. Of course, there, there, there is not only one risk, because it's not only one source, the fertilization, but this lets to use the simple technologies that are clearly reducing the risk uh, when it's clear, like uh, the story that we, that we, that we, uh, we, were, we were talking about uh, uh, today and this afternoon. That's, that's my position. Thank you. That's my opinion. Ettore, thank you. Thanks to all our panelists, Benoit, Ettore, Floriana, Luca, Ronald and Pascal. Uh, thanks also to our audience for their participation and their attention today. Thanks for the time. Uh, you're given and to our your active team as well uh you don't see them but uh they make it all happen malta zoran anna and the social media team as well and to opera and uh safer phosphates thank you for uh, your support today as well so wherever you are today i wish you a good day